So welcome to the Master uh, Master of the Art of Selling Dynamics 365 Sales Accelerator. I'm Shay Drake. I'm the marketing director here at Journey Team and your host today. Uh, I want to thank you again for joining us. We're going to be diving into how Dynamics 365 Sales Insights can accelerate your sales activities. Before we dive in, we are going to go over just a bit of background about Journey Team. Uh, if you haven't met with us before, here are some of the awards and recognition that we've received over the years, including the Microsoft Inner Circle, which only the top 1% of Microsoft partners achieve. And here's a little background info about us. We are in our 30th year here at Journey Team. Our official birthday is next month. And then this is where Journey Team can most assist with Microsoft technologies, including ERPs, CRMs, cloud technologies, content and collaboration, business intelligence, data and change management and adoption. And here are our presenters. Like I said, I'm Shay Drake, marketing director here at Journey Team. And with me, we have our experts, Rigo and Brandon. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to those guys. Take it away, Rigo. Thank you, Shay. Um, yeah, Rigo Sierra here, Solution Architect here at Journey Team, and going to um, walk through Sales Accelerator and just kind of tee you up and give you the lay of the land of how that's going to look. Is I will be walking through elements of uh, of the Sales Accelerator. So the boring stuff, Brandon, my counterpart here on this presentation, is actually going to show you um, a demo from it. So I, the, the, the hope and the objective is I'll tee you up on some of the items that you can then, Brandon, be able to share and highlight in, in action um, as we go through it. So we're going to go ahead and kick it off. Okay, first slide here is let's talk about Sales Accelerator. What is Sales Accelerator? Um, not only what Sales Accelerator, who's kind of our typical audience of Sales Accelerator, right? Uh, Sales Accelerator is, is very wide on how you can um, use it but it's kind of empowering and focus and it's been tailored in a way that it's it's for your sales sales team and sales manager. Um, it's part of the Dynamics 365 um, Sales Insight. Um, it's, again, usually primarily used for the sales reps to stay on top of their typical lead prospects, your onboarding, so on and so forth. So kind of look at it as top of funnel, right? Which is sales team A leads come in. How do I or get organized? How do I how do I uh, stay on top of things? Keep that constant communication with that prospect. Sales Accelerator helps you tremendously on that. Um, and not only that, it helps you keep you organized and keeps you focused on what really matters, right? Um, there's a lot of cool things that come with it that we'll touch on, but um, that's kind of what the crux of Sales Accelerator is. Sales Accelerator uh, here is uh, helps you focus on your first leads as and helps you prioritize what the leads are. It helps you allow it to give it a score so you can go ahead and and ensure that you're touching the right client. If it's a hot lead, if we need a figure out that it's a high touch prospect that we need to continue keep that constant communication before it sizzles out the deal sizzles out this um, sales accelerator gives you that 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 ability and that advantage to other competitors um it also highlights what you need to do that next so it, you can build out in a in a way that hey i want to make sure that when i get these prospects or these clients is this is my style of approach these are the steps that i need to take and it helps you can automate that in a way that it, it it creates these automatic activities, boils up to the top of what needs to get to, uh, done every day. It gives you that daily pipeline lens of what you need to do, what you need to activate, and who you need to, to execute on. Yeah, so um, also one a key thing is numerics across the board because without uh, the everything you do needs to pr produce results, it gives you a an excellent offering and a tool to forecast your revenue. Um, so, and we'll touch on that a little later. Here on the side, uh, I have a little screenshot to kind of give you a little teaser of what we're going to show a little later on. But as you can see that on your left-hand side, it has my work, which essentially helps you organize and prioritize what those leads look like or the prospects as a whole, regardless of the vertical that you're in, let it be leads or opportunities. And it helps you prioritize what you need to do and what you need to execute in that day. Um, as also you can see there, you have the the ability there we're going to touch a little bit more in depth um, lower down is sequences. So think of sequences, even though I'm going to say this and retract it because it's being phased out by Microsoft. Think of it a playbook. It holds your hand. You uh, identify what steps 
rules of engagement that you want to um, have, communication or touch points you want to have with this prospect, that the ability of generating sequences gives you that flexibility and have each salesperson tailored in a way. That, or you can have, if it's one standardized process across the organization, you can um, implement that. Or if each salespeople, like each salespeople do, have a different style and, um, and if it makes them successful, this this sales accelerator slash workspace, which we'll touch on a little bit, gives you a little flexibility to um, pivot and configure it in a way that makes you uh, um, successful as long as you hit those targets. Sales pipeline. So it's kind of a little bit of a, a subset of what we just touched on today. I'm, I'm sorry, in the um, uh, um, upper um, graph. So it helps you, gives you the following capabilities, manage and view records and activities, kind of like you saw in that brief screenshot, manage and work lists by, sort, uh, by filtering. So again, you can build views that allow you to sort and filter in a way that gives you the, the best actionable items at the very top based on how you want to design that. And it gives obviously gives you the most relevant information. So you can definitely customize those views in the system in a way that gives you prominent information, what I would call above the fold, that gives you prominent information of that customer. So you don't have to scroll down and say, hey, I want key information from that customer that helps me understand what I need to do and just go after it, right? Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the other information in the different tabs or below the fold is all supplemental information, but it gives you the ability to tailor all the key information at the very top. So when you see it, you're, you're off to the races. Um, create connect sequences, kind of what we touched on a little bit above, right, is um, again, it gives you that ability to get yourself in a, in a position that, that if you have a specific prospect that's high touch, you can create what those touch points are and the frequency and the duration, right? So as you can see in the screenshot is you have an, you start with an incoming call and then from there you follow up with an email and then it has a wait timer. That wait timer again gives it, hey, I want it two days before I follow up with that customer because I don't want to be that stalker salesperson. So it gives you that flexibility to say, hey, maybe it's two days, maybe it's a week after based on what you guys sell and what you guys offer, the nature of your business, it gives you that flexibility. So you see a screen here that is kind of a workflow configuration form. And again, just like I said, it's configuration. You do not need to be a developer to do that. It's kind of a drag and drop approach that allows you to kind of dictate and tailored in a way that you want to keep in contact with that specific um, prospect. Workspace. This goes back to um, what I mentioned earlier. Workspace, it, it gives you kind of a blank canvas to actually tailor it and 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 and, and um, build out that that um, think of it you breaking out uh, building out a UI that helps you uh, create all the specific fields, more of a drag and drop tailored in a way that you can see all the information, all the prominent information you as a specific salesperson that want to see it, or you can build it out in a workspace and build it out for the rest of the team if the rest of the team has a similar style, which we haven't seen in a, in a very long time. Each salesperson has their own unique style that makes them successful, but it, they're all using and drawing from the same data points. So it's just how they're getting organized. Some people are organized a little different. And if that's the case, that's what's that's what's cool about the workspace. It's a blank canvas that you can draw down from what data elements are available that you can go ahead and position it in a way that it that it makes you that it's intuitive for that specific salesperson. The sales of uses reports. Awesome. So you do have out of the box uh, several of can reports that you can that you can leverage. There are some uses reports here that are very cool that Microsoft offers. And again, it may it's kind of it tries to accommodate the broad masses. So some of these things could be potentially tweaked and or carbon copied and modified with your values and your parameters. But some, as you see here on, on, on the slide here, the screenshot of the reports, here is one of the many reports that, uh, uh, that come out of the box. Um, some of these are Power BI reports and that are embedded within CRM, which is very cool. However, the catch is on some of these reports, um, they are uh, cycled, to, they are um, positioned in a way that they're cycled every 24 hours. So some of this is static throughout the day and it, won't get, it has a nightly refresh. But again, if you were to create a, a clone of this report and, and scheduled it in a different way, you can have that in real time or once a day is enough to give you kind of the previous day snapshot of those results and whatnot. 
So again, it these reports, these user reports touch on lead opportunities. It lets you create data filters however you want. So you are not limited and married to these are the metrics and you have to do them. No, it gives you flexibility to kind of take it, absorb it and say, I like these, but I need to put my twist to it. Meaning, hey, I need this additional parameter or I need to omit this parameter because we don't we don't operate in that in, in that way. So so it does give you that flexibility. So it lets you kind of pivot in a way that it gives you a wide range to do and scale your numerics the way you want it. All right. So here's kind of going back to the sequence reporting that we touched on. It kind of gives you the ability to kind of tell you the sequence of events of how I want to interact with specific pros prospects and saying, hey, um, this high touch one, I want to interact with them twice a week or whatever the may case may be. Kind of like the configuration form that we just touched on gives you that ability so you can do that and then all that funnels into the sequence reporting also again quick note on this one this is also refreshed once a day you can definitely take a copy of this and, and create it make it your own a your own and just and again cycle that however you feel appropriate from there but again out of the box the sequence reports and the some of the usage reports are power bi reports that are scheduled to be refreshed um, nightly yeah uh, yeah, so here. Oh, well, I went through it fast. I bet I probably be gonna bore you guys more excited for the actual demo than than me just jabbering on. So again, just kind of the, to tee it up for, for, the, for the rest of the group is what we're gonna do in this live demo that I'm gonna pivot over to Brandon is he's gonna give you an overview, uh, to touch on the sales pipeline, sequence, workspace, and reporting, and potentially not in that sequential order, <laughs> that he's going to touch on all these specific areas. All right, and I will go ahead and share my screen and I will jump right into it. So to follow up with what Rigo was talking about, so um, in this environment that I'm going to be demoing, um, it only has sales customer service and I do have omni-channel installed. You'll probably see my URL, but um, it is an omni-channel environment that we use, but it's pretty vanilla. Uh, most of the data that you're seeing is Either it came from the Sales Accelerator uh, demo template data um, that I installed, as well as a little bit of data that I created as well. Um, so it's fairly vanilla. And as far as what we're going to be focusing on, kind of picking up where Rigo kind of left off, is that I'm going to be touching on the, the pipeline and reporting, but really the focus is going to be in kind of spending most of my time on the work list segments and sequences. So kind of how all the, those three items are kind of interconnected. And then also to kind of put some emphasis is that I am using, so my demo user has a sales enterprise license. It is not a sales premium license. So I will show a little bit as far as um, kind of some of the, the cool things that are available to the enterprise level license, because a lot of this stuff in years past used to be behind the sales premium license and was not available to sales enterprise. Uh, Microsoft has made this, this change. I believe it was a couple of years ago. Um, and so part of the reason why we're, you know, kind of the incentive for us to do this webinar is that there's a lot of cool stuff available out there that is already included in your license um, that people need to be aware of so they can take advantage of and, you know, talk to us to help kind of implement and or, to, uh, you know, get the value to your organization. Um, so I wanted to kind of emphasize that is that it, we are using a sales enterprise license, not a sales premium. Um, so everything you see is available to that sales enterprise license. There are a couple uh, limitations and restrictions. And then um, the last caveat that I have is that I'm going to be focusing on sales accelerator specifically. I'm not going to be kind of talking through a lot of the out of the box sales pieces and aspects to CRM and or kind of uh, jumping into kind of discussing the navigation and, and, and some of that stuff. I'll do some call outs, but, um, you know, the intent is to, to focus really on the sales accelerator components. And um, I'm kind of making some assumptions there. So that's kind of the, the high level intro. And so kind of jumping into it, what you see on my screen, hopefully this is large enough for everybody. Let me see. I could zoom in a little bit. How does that look? I'll just zoom in it's a smidge, just in case. But here, this is just an out-of-the-box dashboard. This is generally kind of where people kind of land as far as when they start their day. So um, probably the, the first question is that Rigo showed a lot of cool uh, screenshots and his slides as far as, okay, I see that work list in the, for the sales accelerator. How do I get to it? Um, what's the impact to my normal day-to-day? -day? So um, I decided to start from the dashboard. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and I'm gonna navigate down here to leads and I'm gonna kind of do a couple different things. 
So from a leads perspective, I'm going to open up the default My Open Leads uh, view. Here I got some data. And so one thing, one way to interact with some of the cell accelerator features is using this focused view right here. So this isn't specific for Sales Accelerator, but I think that a lot of times this gets over, overlooked, um, especially since a lot of the, the capabilities tied to this work items view um, is kind of associated with Sales Accelerator to begin with. So here we can see that I have, um, it's now changed my, my, how I'm interacting with the system. I now have, um, I have this list of leads. It's kind of, it's the same list, but it's kind of changed it a little bit. As well as you can see, I'm on the sales insights form. And um, I can also kind of see some sales insights specific data on this record as well. I'm just gonna zoom out just as, I zoomed in and then I zoomed, okay. So I guess I don't have any other details. Um, so here are a couple things that I wanted to call out. So from a lead perspective, looking at work items, you'll notice that, um, and I'm gonna make no mention of this uh, here in just a couple minutes as I move to the sales accelerator experience, which is over here in the navigation. But the it's giving me a lead score for these, but it's not giving me any kind of color coding or anything like that. And that's because I'm interacting with sales accelerator capabilities from a uh, from a normal list view kind of perspective. But you can see here, as far as this view, I got an introduction email. So this is letting me know what activities are coming up. So this is some test data that I created. Um, so I can see that I have here in the middle of my record on the Sales Insights form, I have the up next widget. So what this is doing is giving us a visual representation of the sequence, the sequences that are associated, that, that are connected to this record, right? Um, so in this case, I'm, I'm supposed to do an introduction email, and then I'm going to do a reminder email, call customer, thank you email, so on and so forth, all the way down to schedule a meeting. And you can have different kind of waiting or aspects of this. Um, so for example, I could send this email now, and then it's going to wait five days, and then it's going to give me a reminder for step two, which is the reminder email. So you can have uh, a bunch of different items here from a sequence perspective, and um, I'm going to be kind of talking a little bit more about how you, why you would set, um, what's the value in setting up your sequences, and what are what are some ideas that you can use as far as uh, getting um, kind of meeting your objectives as far as improving the selling experience for your for yourselves and or your team. A um, couple other things that I wanted to call out is that this view can be configured, right? So one thing that I'll do, so I can come over here and I'm going to show you a couple things. So again, I'm from I'm looking at my open leads from the leads area, not sales accelerator. So if I click settings, this is where I would be able to configure that what that view looks like. But from if you're not in the sales accelerator area, you cannot configure this view. So I just wanted to call that out is that that's kind of one um, one thing of, of note is just be mindful of where you're at because some of the customization and configurations you have are are, are limited. Um, so the other thing is, is that it, you can identify some of the key fields, and then also it's going to give you some reminders as far as appointments coming up. And what's also cool is um, I can navigate around to these leads. I'm just going to update my form, and it's going to open up those specific records so I can identify what's going on. And this is a good example of this record was created. And I'm going to be teasing a lot of different things um, related to sequences and segments. So again, the sequence is the the, the steps, right? The step-by-step -step thing that we expect that the sellers are going to do. Um, in this case, you can have automation to where you're automatically applying sequences to records um, based on whatever the uh, criteria is. Or you can have it to where, depending on if they don't fall into any of that criteria, you might not be automatically applying a sequence. And then I can therefore... Um, you know, expect the sales, uh, the sellers to be able to connect a sequence to these records. So what this, what that looks like is I can come in here, I can connect a sequence, and it's going to give me a list of sequences that I have available for this specific uh, record. So here I can see I got my new lead nurture out, so I can connect this specific se sequence, and then it's going to load and it's going to give me the list of activities that it, it is expecting me to execute. So pretty cool. So some of the kind of uh, key things with with sequences is in in our case we're using a very standard need uh, this is new lead nurturing sequence right here's my standard five items it's not very specific it's kind of generic but at the same time is what you could do and what customers what we we tend to see from from our customers is 
de- depending on your sales process, there's your, there's generally multiple work streams involved, either multiple work streams from an onboarding perspective, right? Let's say lead to order, or uh, there's multiple types of industries that might require different steps or the size of the lead or opportunity. There's a bunch of different kind of um, – uh, types of segregation or segments that you can have across your sales process. And it could be even different teams that are touching some of these different aspects. So one of the ways that you can use sequences is that, hey, if you have multiple work streams and those work streams require different steps, even outside of your business process flow, you can configure uh, sequences to be automatically associated to those records based on whatever, however you typify that leader opportunity record. So if you have a different process, so if I go over here, just for a visualization perspective, I have an industry field. And obviously there, there could be, a um, you could have a number of different option sets or, you know, kind of uh, look up references, but you could have a different work stream for accounting compared to brokering, compared to consulting or consumer services. These could all have a different type of sequence that you want your sellers to um, be working with because Customers in those industries expect a different experience, right? Some might be more high touch, some might be, you know, um, lower touch, so on and so forth. Um, some might move fast, some might move slow. And so how you how do you account for that? And, and you do have the opportunity to be able to do that from a sequence perspective. So I, I kind of wanted to uh, make mention of that. So uh, I've kind of taken more time here than, than I would like, but I know I'm a, I go a little long-winded and a lot of this is pretty exciting. So again, this is from the lead perspective. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the sales accelerator. So over here from a sales accelerator perspective, you can see it's just slightly different, right? Instead of my open leads, right? I got my work list items. So here the intent is that I'm not just look like we know from this perspective, you're just not looking at leads. It could be a number of different tables involved here or entities, so on and so forth. Um, so it's going to, I can group them by, look, I got my leads and opportunities being kind of some of the, the big cult, um the big uh, tables that I'd be engaged with from a seller perspective, but I can also modify this. Maybe I want to group this by something different. So I can filter the work items. I can filter it by a specific record type, right? So I don't have any, um, you know, kind of action items for accounts and context. I can go by unopened. So this is pretty cool. So this basically represents data or activities have changed across these records. And just like you would do in Outlook, right? I can click on this, I can click on this record, I can see it, and it's going to mark this as a red activity and it's going to fall off my work stream list. So um pretty cool. So it's kind of the intent is that this operates and you can work just like you work in Outlook from a dynamic CRM sales perspective with the sales accelerator. Um, so same type of experience. So just to kind of go back to the filters and kind of show you some of the other capabilities here is I have unopened. I also have followed. Like, let's say, for example, you have some long running opportunities or deals that you're working on um, that you want to kind of get uh, easy access to. Right. So you can go and you can follow these records and you can see them. And so that way you can kind of keep tabs on them a little bit more um, depending on whatever the, you know, depending on those circumstances. So that's pretty cool. Um, do buy. So this is related to the activities. So the entire purpose of the sales accelerator is to help facilitate communication, coordination, activities related to the data that is in your system, your leads and opportunities. So I can identify, hey, what what activities do I have due today compared to what activities uh, from tomorrow or what activities are overdue? So you can you can identify what what are the leads or opportunities in this case that have opportunities that fall in each of these buckets and you can easily navigate among amongst those. Now you can you can kind of do this out of the box as well from a sales professional perspective, right? But you just have different views and it's it's uh, it's not as slick of an experience, but you can still achieve this. But this is just kind of what it looks like from a sales accelerator standpoint. I already showed, but you can here's here you can have your different record types, right? So I just want to look at my leads or my opportunities, so on and so forth. And you can also be filtering this down by specific activity types. Like I said, this is activity driven is the intent. What are the touch points? And kind of like what Rigo was showing in some of the uh, screenshots from a reporting perspective, how does all this roll up to reporting? Because we talked with lots of people and it's just a matter of um 
how do they, you know, uh, from a seller perspective, uh, seller management perspective, like, you know, how do I know kind of what the, what the team's working on and what they're doing and how do I make it easy for them to track those activities so that we can both get the value so they can kind of see what they're, they know what they're doing and that they can use the system to their advantage and management is also able to, to help and get visibility. So this is where you'd be able to create those activities for the upcoming appointments. And also one of the cool things about the sales accelerator is and the sequences right is that it's automatically creating those activities based off of the data trigger points and based on where you're at in the specific sequence so um and i'll kind of drill into that here in a little bit but i just kind of wanted to show uh kind of the power of this filtering ability from the sales accelerator perspective and so what it's kind of doing is for those that are used to the sales hub right we got the whole kitchen sink here on the left navigation right here's all the stuff that's going on um kind of what it turns into is that a lot of that navigation is just kind of it, it's uh, not that there's less value because obviously there's a lot of granularity you can drill into but you can work and do entire entirely your uh your work stream from the work list and the sales accelerator and you don't need to navigate around because it's telling you what you need to do um so that's that's pretty powerful the next thing that I want to do is you can obviously add different sorting. If you want to sort by different um, criteria, for example, you can sort by due date. Hey, what's what's due first? What's due last? You can see it kind of updated my sort order here. But you can kind of see just work. Hey, I, I can work my list as far as what I need to do as a seller. These are the customers based on the sequence, based on the activities that have been created. These are the, these are the, the leads or opportunities that I need to work on first. You can see here also is that this is – this is focused on the activities associated to the records. And like I said, I don't have any activities associated to accounts and context, but this is table agnostic, right? It doesn't care if it's um, if that activity is related to a lead compared to an opportunity. I don't have to navigate around. This is everything that I need to be doing from one single view across all those tables, which is really cool. Um, again, lead scoring. So, or scoring in general, because you can have scoring on the uh, on the opportunity as well. But this is really powerful to where you can kind of sort by like, all right, so which leads are the hottest? Because generally, if I'm putting on my my uh, seller hat, is I want to spend more time on the deals that are the hottest, right? What are there any action items that I need to take care of? Is there anything that I need to do to either make sure that those deals continue to be hot, or um, that I need to like what what can I do to close those deals right though that's my focus then I can focus on how do I nurture my other deals so that they can also uh, eventually be that hot as well so pretty cool and you can see here is that it's automatically doing some grouping and this can be configured so I'm just going to minimize all these just so you can kind of see what it's doing. But you can see here I got leads with grade A, grade B, grade C, other grade A, grade A, B, C for leads and opportunities. So it's grouping all of these and then it's giving me an, an idea as far as how many different deals do I have that's falling into each of these different buckets and what those scores are. So pretty cool. And that can be configured because I'm sure you, some of you are probably have noticed that Hey, 89, yeah, that's pretty hot. 88 is pretty hot. 66, that doesn't seem that hot, uh, but that one's considered to be in this bucket compared to this. And it could be just because of how the, the scoring uh, is generated. There might be some, some activities or other things like interaction with, for example, my Lily Piles lead that is um, bumping it up into that grade A lead category. So again, scoring can be configured. I'm not going to be touching a lot on scoring, but I did want to spend some time in kind of discussing scoring. Um, so I think that that's, that's really cool. Um, the last couple things is that you can, you can do all your groupings by any of these, right? So the next one that I really wanted to do is obviously by name, less useful because things are going to have distinct names, um, activity type, uh, we can, well, how about this? I'll just click on activity type so you can see it. It'll group by email messages, phone calls, tasks, so on and so forth, appointments, record type. And then this one's new, and you don't get this option on the uh, the my list view, but you could go by sequence name. So for example, here's my table, right? Here's my opportunity nurturing and new lead nurturing, right? So those are my two sequences, and these are the stages that they're in. So I can see that I have 11 leads that are in this specific stage, 
Okay. Um, so what this means is that I could work on it from like, all right, so if you're thinking about the escalation and kind of making sure you have customers at each of those different levels from a seller perspective, this is where you'd be able to see it's like, oh no, I, I need to start moving, moving customers up that pipeline. And I might need to do that a little bit quicker than what I have my sequence set up to do just so that I can ensure that I have that continual and persistent success as opposed to large spikes, right? And again, this is just, it's telling me what I need to do. I don't need to think about it. I can see that I have 11 at this introduction mail step and I'm able to make a decision of as far as how I need to spend my day. And my day is need to be spending either sending emails for the introduction step or I already sent them. I need to mark them complete. So here I'm going to go, I'm going to click on this uh, Mariah Smith one. I can see that a sequence has already been created and it's already made this introduction uh, email for me. So I can open this email up and then I can send it, right? So it already applied. So in your sequence, and I'll show this here in a little bit, is that you can already have your, your email templates built and then you can, when you send the email, it's going to automatically populate with that, with that template in mind. So as I open this up, right, it's loading. And there we go. I don't need to do anything. It's already including dynamic content. The email template's already set up. So that's one thing that's also really cool with the um, the sequences is that it helps with those touch base and communication. I don't need to go draft an email, right? Um, I don't need to go talk to ChatGPT to draft my email either, right? Like we already use ChatGPT to draft this email for this template um, as, a, as an example, not for this literal one, but um, just speaking uh, perspective, I think, it's a pretty cool tool, but that's kind of as far as how the process is. It's giving time back to the sellers so that they can nurture their deals and they don't have to spend time doing all this from scratch every time uh, for for the, the opportunities and leads that they're working on. So really cool. So I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to just mark this complete. So um, you might not have sent the email from here. Maybe you had a different touch base. Whatever, whatever it was, that you can you can mark these steps of the sequence complete whenever you would like, right? Um, so that might give some sales managers a little bit of hesitation, right? Where it's like, oh, are they circumventing the process? But really, it's uh, this introduction, like in the sequence, right? This is this is our eighty percent standard. Most people are probably going to send an email. Maybe I did a phone call. Maybe I met hit uh, had lunch with them it could be a number of reasons you could capture notes and then you could complete that step so and as that's completing what it's going to do is it's going to refresh my up next widget and it's going to give me it's going to tell me what's coming up next so it's going to tell me hey uh look i don't have anything if you go over here look at my work list right i don't have anything in the next bucket and it's telling me is that traditionally in this sequence it's set up to where it's going to wait for five days before it's going to give you a reminder to do the next step in that sequence okay um now if if this deal's hot and you're like you know what fish on um we're a good fit uh they seem like a, a great customer and we can we can help them achieve success um you can skip the wait time right this is this is a standard like it, you're still giving your sellers you're giving them a um you're giving them a foundation but they can kind of modify it to meet their needs and they still have flexibility right you're just um you're just giving them hey this is this is kind of the the standard operating procedures but there's lots of art and selling and so i i we don't want to make it to where we're taking the ER out of that because it's very important. Um, but this is kind of how you can manipulate it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to skip that wait time. And so um, it's going to give me, now I'm on this uh, reminder email. So now I'm in the next bucket as far as what I need to do. So I can send this reminder. I can mark this step complete and so on and so forth is that I can, I can do a lot of these sequences with this specific customer and I can do it real quick and I can, I can skip it. You know, it's like, you know, uh, here I am, I'm at step three already. So really cool. Um, so hey, one other thing, Brandon, if you don't mind me interjecting, one of the things mm -hmm. that we've seen a lot of our clients do with sequences is it's really high value add um, when they onboard new salespeople. It, it holds your hand of what they need to do based on their business model, all their touch points, and so on and so forth. It's a really high um, high um, selling tool um, as they bring them because as you from one salesperson to another, or as they come from one organization, the styles are different, 
the 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 approach and strategy is different. So this sequence is it does not it holds her hand and then makes them uh, make him feel a little warm and fuzzy to make sure that they're not skipping a step or missing a step. So the onboarding process of this for new for for new um, members of the sales team is really beneficial. We've seen that be a high success on our side. Thank you. Yep. Exactly. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to show, so this is kind of how you interact with the up next widget. So the next thing that I want, um, well, I guess there's two things. Um, I'm going to go show uh, as far as bulk email capability from the work list, as well as what this looks like from a previous steps perspective. So at the bottom, you can see I expanded previous steps. So I could see, hey, what have I completed and when did I complete it? So um, gives me a little bit of visibility as far as what I'm, what am I achieving? Like when was the last time I reached out? So let's say maybe I skipped some wait times and I moved really fast. Um, and I you know, kind of wanted to kind of see what was going on. Or if you're a sales manager putting on that hat, right? Hey, I got uh, Rigo's consistently doing the entire sequence in one day. Like maybe I need to give, give Rigo a little bit more coaching. Um, and maybe that's a little bit too much for the customers based on the, what the experiences you get, uh, you have in your specific industry in your line of business. And maybe, Hey, that five, that waiting one uh, business week is really beneficial to let the customer digest and you want to give them that opportunity to do so. So we'll tell Rigo to cool his jets and then we'll come over here. And uh, from a bulk email perspective, um, you know, I spoke with a, um, with a customer that they were having some challenges from a bulk email perspective. Like the sales team was doing a lot of bulk email sends to their, their accounts, their leads, their opportunities. And, um, you know, there was, uh, it, it was, it was a lot of work because it was hard to kind of get to all the data that they were interested in. So from a bulk email perspective, as it is related to sales accelerator, in the sequence and the emails that we have already pre-generated, if I come in here and I got my introduction email and I come in and I click bulk email, it's going to automatically group the emails into the, spe the, the specific sequences where there's already an email created and give me the opportunity to bulk send and execute those emails. So uh, this is really cool because remember, the template's already been created. The template has already been applied to that specific sequence step with the dynamic content. All I do, and we're not just automatically sending this stuff, right? We want the sellers to be able to implement their art style and have control over their process and their deals, and they can choose when they want to kind of do these, these bulk sends. Obviously, from a serum perspective, like, you know, we have full capability to automate some of these steps, but the, some of these might require a little bit of a personal touch, but you have that capability where I can group the different sequences related to an email and I can bulk send them, which is really cool. So um, if everything's already been set up, it makes it really easy to do this, right? I don't need to go bug marketing or IT to be able to kind of put something together. Um, now, this also doesn't necessarily like, you know, um, you know, as far as uh, the the sales reps kind of putting together their own email templates, right? Like they still have that process where they put together the template and they can just go do the bulk send from a from a list view. But this is specific to where, hey, we've put pre we've put purposeful thought into the sequence and how we want to interact with our customers from a template standpoint, and that's all done. All I have to do is execute, maybe add some personalization if I want to or don't want to, um, and so on and so forth. So uh, I think that bulk email tool is really cool and i think that there's a lot of value in it and i think it's um i think it's i think there's a lot of uh, good impact that it can have and so i really wanted to kind of stress stress that aspect um all right so some of the next things that i wanted to do so i've talked a lot about the uh, the my work list some things that you can do um and i'm going to wrap up i'm going to show a little bit of the uh configuration you can do with the work list. And then I'm going to kind of go into and talk a little bit about more of some of the additional features that you get on this, on the sales insights forms for your records inside of CRM. So uh, next up, I'm going to remember when I clicked on settings, when I was at that lead list view um, and, but everything was grayed out. I didn't have the capability to make any adjustments. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click settings from the sales accelerator, my work list view. And now you're going to see this that I have, in this case, you, you want to give this to everybody, but um, 
I've given it to the administrator to where everybody can make adjustments to these card, essentially these little card view forms. Um, so you can see here, this is what it looks like, right? Name, job title, company name, industry. And then it's going to show the up next activity. You can modify this to whatever you like. I can add additional fields here, right? So from my table, I can add, you know what? I want to add a record field and I want to do, here, I'm just going to grab a city, for example, right? I want to know where they're at. Um, and so I can customize this and I can have up to, let's see, uh, five rows if we include the up next activity. So that's really cool. You can also do, hey, where do you want to show? Do you want to show the, the follow indicator or the predictive score? And then this item is, you can kind of move those, those two items around. And then you can also always reset it to default. So default, it does not include industry and it does not include city. So that's what it happens from default. And then the other thing that you can do is you can identify the, the actions that you want to be able to see here in that bottom area as well. So right now it's going to do the call to actions, the skip wait time, send now, move to the next step, that kind of stuff. So it's going to you can kind of configure this to show those items that, that yourself and your organization find value in. So I think that that's cool. It's just not, hey, this is what you get, but this is what you this is what you get, and these are some of the uh, configuration options that you have. And again, you can do this at the lead, the opportunity, the contact, and the account level. So here, from an opportunity perspective, this is what it would look like. This is the out of the box one. I haven't configured that. And then the account, you can kind of see that it's kind of modifying. Um, you know, there's there's different data points that are that are relevant based on uh, what type of table that we're interacting with. So, pretty cool. Next up, from a filter and sort perspective, here you can identify, like I showed, I went through a lot of the filter and sort capabilities, but let's say from an organization standpoint, um, like no one ever clicks, no one ever follows records, and you don't really use, let's say, the record type. You, you know, uh, you just tend to, most of your work's on lead and opportunities, and you don't need to be able to distinguish the two of them. You just want to be able to work your list of items. So you can uh, simplify your filter criteria as well as your sort criteria. Um, so, and you can also leave it out of the box, but you have, you have that option to um, modify it a little bit. And next thing I'm going to do is you can see here availability is grayed out for me. And if I click auto advance, there's, uh, you know, there's some additional settings here that I can get to. Um, and these features, these are specific for sales premium. So I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to go back to my lead list view here. Remember when I talked a little bit about, hey, I couldn't make any adjustments here. But if I click on availability from this perspective, I get the notification that this is a sales premium specific feature, auto advances sales premium, as well as steps and activities, right? So from an enterprise, a sales enterprise license perspective, I can create sequences, I can create segments, I can work the, the, the work items list, I can configure the score, but some of the additional advanced feature sets related to auto advancing specific steps based on you know what your criteria is and a little bit some more advanced steps related to the steps and activities is um, you know, those are available for sales premium but not sales enterprise. But I wanted to just make sure I did this call out because you know, just to reinforce, um, everything that I'm showing is with a sales enterprise level license. Okay. Um, all right. So I kind of teased that I'm going to be going back to the form here. So I'm going to kind of be, I'm going to show this a little bit. So there's a couple additional widgets that are associated to, uh, to the to the sales insight form. So obviously I have the up next widgets. Um, and down here I got my timeline. And I'm just going to zoom out just a smidge because I kind of want it all to be on one page. So I apologize if it gets a little small. Let's see how small it gets. Hopefully that's that's not too small for everybody. And I'll, and I'll zoom back in here in a, in a second. But I can go through these different records and I could see lead scores and relationship health um, and some of this data, kind of what Riga was talking about related to the refresh time frame. So this was a lead that I created um, uh, this morning or late last night. Um, and so we can see that, you know, I don't have much data here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of click through my list here. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna go to Lily Piles. And she's gonna show that I have a lead score and a grade and what's kind of um, 
and what's kind of been the impact of this grade. So I can see I got a 66. I'm a grade A. My my score for this lead is improving. Um, and it's also configured to where, hey, country and region for our line of business, country and region are important, right? Purchase time frame is important. Estimated budget is important. And purchase process is unknown. Or excuse me, purchase process is important. Not that it's important that it's unknown. So these, this has been configured in the lead score capabilities. And so this is like, all right, so if I'm looking at this record, right? Again, going back to if I'm a seller, like what does the system, what is the system telling me that I need to do? And I need to go capture some additional, I need to have a conversation with Lily and identify these, these data points. Okay. I don't need to think about it. The system's telling me what I need to do so I can increase the score and increase uh, my likelihood of closing this deal successfully. So I'm going to click on in each of these uh, little uh, information icons that does do pop-ups, pop-outs as far as um, why this is important. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to click on details so you can see what this looks like. So it will give you a graph representation as far as what this lead, like how this lead has scored over time. So I installed this data yesterday in this environment, so I don't have a uh, a lot of data here, but here you could kind of see, are you moving up? Are you moving down? Is it bouncing around? You know, kind of uh, so on and so forth. And so you can kind of um, hopefully identify what you need to do to close this deal, communicate with this customer, identify it's a fit. Um, again, it breaks down the score improvers and the score harmers, right? So if I went and filled out this information, it's not going to immediately update this score because again, that report runs about once a day as far as updating the lead scores. So um, keep that in mind. But it tells you what you need to do to improve it. And then it also kind of gives you some kind of cool contextual information as far as what is the lead score and why is it important, so on and so forth. All right, so that's the lead score. The next couple uh, things that I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, I'm, I'm running out of time. So real quick, relationship help. Uh, the five second version is that it's gonna tell you what activity is coming up and when is it due. Um, and then also, oops, I clicked on it. So it's going to open up that phone call record. And then it's also going to tell me what was the last act, last interact interaction with the customer as well, right? Whether it was a sequence or other, some, some other form of communication. Okay. Um, there's a lot more here, but what I wanted to do is kind of jump into and talk a little bit more about, uh, sequences in general and how you set them up and how you configure them and what it looks like. Um, for those that use Dynamics, uh, the Dynamics marketing module, sequences look very similar to real-time marketing uh, journeys. So um, if you're familiar with marketing, this has the same look and feel. But you can see here, I, I, it comes, comes out of the box with lead nurturing and opportunity nurturing. So I'm going to click up, I'm going to click on lead nurturing, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you um, like kind of what some of your options are as far as creating and kind of modifying some of these. So it's going to tell me this is where my sequence starts. It's going to show me, hey, this is my introduction email. Again, there's the template that I applied to this. This is all description emails per CRM only. I can have wait times, right? Whatever the interval between interaction points are, and then kind of what the next activity needs to be. Wh whether it's an email, this this case, it's an email, then I'm gonna do a phone call, and then I'm gonna do another email, and then I'm gonna create a task. So um, this is kind of what you can do as far as a, a very simple perspective, and this is what it comes with out of the box. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on connected leads. Here I could see a list of all the leads that are connected to this specific sequence. So if I was a manager, right, I could use this to manage my team. I can identify, hey, I want to filter this by a specific sales rep and see where all of their leads are at, um, so on and so forth. And I can connect other leads manually just straight from here. So kind of cool where you can, I, it knows that this is a five-step sequence and it'll tell me where people are currently at, who's the owner and what was the last connected. And then also uh, this one is um, days elapsed. So the other thing, and I'm going fast, the other thing that you can identify is if not only what what leads are associated with the sequence, but if there is a segment involved. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about segments again very briefly here in just a few minutes because I'm running out of time. Um, so I'm going to come back. I'm going to go back real quick from a sequence perspective. So I can I have the option where I can create a copy of a sequence. I can activate it. I can edit the sequence, so on and so forth. So a lot of a lot of the same stuff that you could do all over the system. Creating a copy is very 
useful. Um, so in my case, I'm going to deselect that and I'm going to create a new sequence. So there are pre-canned templates for sequences that you can use. So out of the box, there are six templates. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do a webinar follow-up. So it's giving me some details about this. I'm going to say, you know, I could start from blank, but I'm going to use this template. New webinar follow-up is going to be associated to leads. Uh, that works for me. I'm going to click next. And it's going to create that sequence, and then I can modify it from there. Um, and while this is, is doing that, while it's uh, loading up that template, um, going back, talking a little bit about, well, it loaded, loaded pretty quick. So I'll talk about segments here in a second. Um, but here you can see very similar look and feel compared to uh, real-time marketing. And I can identify what the branches are and I could modify these different steps. Again, remember when I was talking about that there's an, there's an art to selling and you have the option to do the email, like sellers can have the option to do the emails themselves. There are also steps where you can bake it into where it's going to automate some of these, right? I can send an automated email. I don't have to only have like do the, um, do the art selling style for every email message, right? The sellers might want us to do some automated messages and then they're kind of uh, filling in the gaps. So I wanted to make that call out. You can have conditions. Right. So if I come in here and I select this condition, right? So advance this condition to yes if the recipient replied within two days. Right. So some of the other options are email was opened, a link was clicked, or an attachment was downloaded. So it's not just the marketing personnel that get to use these analytics and make these decisions. It's this, it's the the sellers are able to do this as well as they're configuring these sequences. And I'm going to just come down here and I'm just going to show a couple other couple other things, talk about segments, and then open it up for some questions. Um, so here from a steps perspective, I'm not going to dwell too much on this. I'm just going to make a couple call out call outs is that you can do automated emails as well as automated text messages from, from your sequence builder. Um, as well, not to mention as far as the, the manual ones where you're going to make an email and then expect that the seller is going to be able to take some action against it. Against it, Conditions can be associated to a specific field or it could also be associated to a specific business process flow stage. Again, this is really powerful. So as you, um, so if I go to a, click over here, if I qualify this lead and I go into the develop stage, from a sequence perspective, maybe I want to do something related to that, right? Maybe there's an action or there's an activity that I that I want to take or need to take. So pretty cool. Um, from a commands perspective, right? You can you can also get really fancy. You can have sequences going into sequences, right? So you could kind of configure this where you got a core sequence and then you got different branches, more or less of that sequence in the form of other sequences from a management perspective, right? Industries are broken up into the specific sequences, which we can then use into, into segments. And then there's also some LinkedIn capability here as well. And I'd love to circle back and talk more about LinkedIn, but uh, focus today was just, uh, the, the sales pipeline, the work, the, the work list, uh, segments and sequences. So that's anyway. So those are some of the options here as far as um, the sequence. Now, real quick, uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the segments. So a segment is, and here you can make a query. So in this case, I did leads in Utah, and um, I was going to take these leads in Utah, and I was going to route them to John, John uh, Reardon, who was my other demo user. But in this case, I can just identify some simple or complicated query criteria. In this case, hey, if you're in Utah, I want you to go into this segment, but I want you to, I want everyone to use the art possible here is that this could be industries, this could be work streams, this could be regions, this could be specific customers, this could be yeah, specific um, revenue targets for specific accounts. This could be whatever you need it to, to be to be able to uh, create purposeful and intentful sequences to each of those different aspects of your business. Okay. This one's really simple, but you can kind of, hopefully you can kind of start piecing together how, how we can use, how you can use this and automate your, your lives.
Um, and so what I'm saying is that based on that filter criteria, if I go and create a lead that is in Utah, it's going to automatically put them in the segment. And then I can connect this segment to a specific sequence. So kind of like I showed is that if I go make a new lead, I can, I can choose to connect that lead to a sequence, right? Or based on whatever segments that you have, territories being an easy one, based on that territory, they're going to go into this, this, seg, uh, this specific segment and you're going to apply their specific sequence if the selling process is different in, in specific territories. Um, and I say that, and because you can also do things where, you know, think about it like, hey, even if the selling process is the same between East Coast and West Coast, um, you might have different assignment rules and you can have assignment rules associated to this segment as well. So not only are they going to fall into this specific segment, if they're in Utah, they're going to be routed to the West Coast team. Um, but now you can kind of see how you can do some uh, round robin or some other kind of specific assignment, automated assignments, not so... Uh, not just automated tasks associated to the sequence. So that's kind of like the, the lead into um, other other items and, and more to come, but I kind of wanted to kind of make sure I connected the dots as far as sequences and segments and how they are how are they they connected and how do they operate and what is the value to to you and inevitably to your customers and clientele. Nice. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, that was really good. Okay, we're going to hop into Q&A and I'm going to take control of the screen here. Um, so one of the questions we've got was, is Dynamics for Sales easier to use than other CRM products? Um, I think so, but I'm a dynamic CRM guy. So I live and breathe dynamics. Um, so we we do often, as far as what we see, like uh, HubSpot and Salesforce, like uh, those are some kind of some of the main things that we kind of go up against from from a sales perspective. Um, they, I, w the comparison I like to make is dynamics is kind of like the kitchen sink. There's a lot there. Um, we, we generally spend in their implement implementations, we spend a little bit of time stripping things out to make it a little bit more simple. But um, some like HubSpot and Salesforce generally come a little bit more simple out of the box. But I think Dynamic Serum is, is superior. Hopefully that answers your question. And if you want to talk more, I'd love to. Okay. There was also a comment about sequences being deprecated. Is that right? Is there something replacing them? So uh, what Rigo meant... I was going to put it in the chat uh, because he was going fast. Sequences are not being deprecated, but sequences are replacing playbook. So the playbooks are being deprecated, not the sequences. So um, if you are using playbooks right now, um, I would strongly think about Sales Accelerator and using sequences to replace playbook. And and honestly, like I think uh, I didn't like playbooks like we rarely implemented them because kind of interacting with them kind of from another table and it kind of felt like it was so many tables and uh, jumps away where sequences are just right there up front and center. Um, and it's just way more powerful than, than playbook was. So. Cool. Uh, excellent. And then can you manage leads by company slash organization where you have multiple people you are contacting or is it solely a by person workflow? And that was in regards to when you were showing uh, that initial uh, mailbox. Okay, so in uh, let me see if I if I understand correctly. So let's say you have multiple contacts with the same organization. Maybe that organization has multiple sub accounts underneath it. And how do you work multiple leads or opportunities related to an organization such as that? Okay. Um, Easy. So you can have multiple opportunities and multiple leads associated to those accounts, and you could have uh, multiple contacts associated to those as well, and that would all roll up. There was one thing that we did, that we that Rigo mentioned, but we didn't show in the demo, and that's who knows whom. So that feature would come into play re related to this as well, as far as how do all these relationships, how are they all interconnected, but you absolutely can. And even from like the Outlook integration is that you can move conversation and activity to a specific lead or deal that you're working on for a company, but you can still have that segregation between, hey, I'm working this deal, Rigo's working this deal, it's the same account, it's the same company, different people, or even the same people, and separate your sequences on those deals and your communication as well. Great. And then another one was, why do tasks created in leads not show up in that work list? That was a little later in your... Oh, <laughs> I didn't have, I don't think I had 
ain't too many tasks created as far as to be able to show, but tasks should show up in the work list as well. So tasks, phone calls, um, appointments, and emails should all show up in the work list. Great. And then can this tool connect with Business Central? Yes, we do a lot of Serum and Business Central implementations. Um, as far as how this tool, like what's the downstream effect of this tool into Business Central, that would be from the onboarding process, right? So lead to order, right? Once the order is submitted, that's when we send that order to Business Central. So that's generally kind of what we see. So as far as um, this from a from a ERP integration perspective, all of this is kind of how we like the focus of the sales accelerator is how we work the deal and how do we actually get it converted into either a customer in BC or an actual order. Um, those are the things that would be integrated, but you wouldn't need to worry about integrating all your activities, your sequences or things like that. It's really when, hey, um, you, you're not doing an order directly at a CRM, but it's more important to get the customer. You can absolutely do that based on these sequences. Boom, update the customer, st uh, the status of the, of the account or the relationship type to customer and get that integrated over to BC. And then our last question is, is the view with connected sequences only available in the global settings? Only available. Oh, uh, from the sales accelerator? Mm-hmm. So there are the the sales insight settings is where you configure all of the sales accelerator information. There's a couple things that you can do from the actual um, the sales area in the sales hub but all of the other settings are configured directly in Sales Insights or the Sales Insights area in the Sales Hub. Hopefully that answered your question. If, uh, if that didn't, please reach out. All right, and that wraps it up for our Q&A. Um, I wanna thank everyone for joining us here today and thank Brandon and Rigo for sharing this really neat tool. Uh, we loved hearing your thoughts, your questions. Please remember to fill out that survey. It really helps us out. And you also have a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. Uh, we will be sending out the slides as well as the recording to those who attended and, and to those who signed up. Uh, and as a last little call out, uh, for those interested, uh, these guys will also be putting on a webinar in July going over Viva sales. So really exciting stuff happening. Check out, check that out. We'll be sending more information on that later. And yeah, thank you for joining us today. Hope you all have an awesome day and an even better week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.